Thanks for staying with us. Representatives from United Nations have met with stakeholders of different sectors in Nigeria. They met to chat ways of helping countries like Nigeria address national priorities towards meeting Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. The SDGs were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to action and to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030 all people enjoy peace and prosperity. The fifth United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework, UNSCDF, is for the period of 2023 to 2027. The now recrescent United Nations Sustainable and Development Cooperation Framework for 2023 to 2027 is the fifth framework of the Union. The objective and expectation of this meeting were to address core programming principles of the 5 Peace 2030 Agenda. They are people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnerships. The framework will ensure that no one is left behind. The focus of the cooperation framework is to be able to come up with a plan for the time horizon that we have mentioned before, that will address the development, humanitarian and peace needs of Nigeria. So we already have a draft theory of change that we have done within our cycle in the UN, and we are taking this theory of change across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. To strengthen the relationship and partnership of the United Nations, UN agencies and the different stakeholders involved, in sustainable development of the country. A senior lecturer in the University of Ibadan, Professor Lanri Olaniyo, in his presentation explained what is in the cooperation framework. It's a commitment of the UN system to the people of Nigeria, particularly the most marginalized and vulnerable. And it is a vehicle for supporting economic transformation as well as supporting peaceful societies through sustainable development strategies specific to diverse country contexts. Participants spoke on how important the UN and the federal government's collaboration is. What we can do at the UN to bring people around the table uh, to leverage those capacities to help Nigeria achieve the goals that it's set out for itself over this next uh, period, you know, the different national and sectorial development plans that have been, been put in place, which also sit under a larger international framework. We're looking at how this new partnership, the continuous partnership, will help to improve the lives of women and girls, even everyone in the, in the Nigerian economy. Because we know that without the support of these international agencies, to some extent, we are actually lagging behind. We are talking about zero tolerance to, to any form of abuse. We are not yet there. The UN SDCF 2023-2027 to is expected to reflect Nigeria's economic, social and environmental conditions. It will provide a strategic framework to address the nation's developmental and humanitarian challenges. Moving on, Road Transport Workers Union are now to pay 800 naira as a consolidated levy to the Lagos State Government. The agreement between the state and the transport union is a move to harmonize dues collected by the government from commercial motorists at parks and garages across the state. This is according to the Commissioner for Finance, Rabiu Oluwo. Lovi Kuku has details in this report. The official launch of the Consolidated Informal Transport Sector Levy has no doubt opened a new vista in the transportation business in Lagos State. Every commercial driver in the state will now pay 800 naira to be shared among government agencies and local governments. The Commissioner for Finance, Rabi Oluwo, says the harmonized levy will help reduce multiple taxes, dues and levies to all agents of state is to organize the collection process to make it more structured so that uh, those collecting dues will not be running after vehicles because ICANN do not run after me, MBA do not run after lawyers. So we have come together to say that we want to put in a structure of the collection process so that we can improve the look and feel of our transport sector. We want to reduce the multiplicity of taxes, 
Uh, people have complained a lot. You know, you pay parking fees, you pay motor fees, you pay this and, you know, and all sorts of taxes, deals and levies, either due to government or association. This consolidated informal transport sector levy will consolidate all taxes, all deals, all levies due to government and association bodies. In addition to this, we have seen some people, they are not local government staff, they are non national union, they are not road, they are called or no agent. You see them flagging their stick, they be collecting money, all received. So if anybody say I pay three thousand, I pay thousand, they might not be lying. We have not sat down. How do we do? When I say, okay, if you are taking off from Badagri, just collect this eight hundred naira. If you like, go to Ikorodu twenty times. Once you flash that eight hundred naira, nobody in Ikorodu will ask you to pay another government levy again. The chairman of the state chapter of road transport workers, Musilu Akinsoya, popularly known as MC Oluomo, seems to disagree with the arrangement. I need the because I have to say, 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 I have national union ticket. You understand? We have no affect in national union ticket. I have to affect in national union ticket. I have to say, I have to say, I have to say, the process is built to take effect in February 2022. From Lagos, Lab Ikuku Uyedoku, reporting for Plus TV, Africa. A professor of education management, Steve Oyebade, has faulted the federal government's plan to increase basic education funding to 3% under 2022, saying it is inadequate. Professor Oyebade said this at a training of education secretaries in Lagos, organized by the Human Development Initiatives. Plus TV Africa correspondent Ngozeka Ohaijesi has more. The state of Nigeria's education system still leaves much to be desired. Over the years, analysts have lamented the growth on the funding of the sector, as well as the rate of out-of-school children, which has increased as a result of insecurity. These issues took center stage at this training workshop. Those funding you are looking at on papers don't get to the child in the classroom. How much of education funding gets to the child in the class? It's, it's, it's marvelous. The child in class is not touched. It's not even there. The, Nigeria has the largest uh, population of out-of-school children. So what are they doing on the streets? So who is supposed to be in charge? So uh, is education really funded? If at national level, we have not gone beyond 7% seven, seven of national budget voted for education for the last 40 years, things are really wrong. What we can do to keep our children in school, first you mentioned it, security to be in place. Because the way it is now, it's um, some of the hindering factors for students not to be in school. Then governments to put in more money, more funds into education. In terms, I know local state is trying, but they still have to do more. They also prefer solutions to other issues affecting basic education in Nigeria. Much as uh, we have advocated for improved security, I think the time has come for citizens to begin to take uh, you know, personal measures, um, particularly state governments. You know, uh, I believe that the state governments can uh, do a lot around equipping their, uh, their state apparatus. Um, apart from supporting the police and all the other you know, paraphernalia, they can also create security watch groups that would help to assist to secure, at least for now, um, government-owned schools in each state. The executive secretaries who were engaged in health management and strategic planning share their optimism. Even the little I've heard, I've started thinking of how to imbibe it into, in, even in my age I mean the secretariat with my staff, early morning exercise, light ones that will help every one of us. The Minister of Education, Adamo Adamo, had said the Buhari's administration was committed to ensure that these interventions have long-lasting dividends towards the empowerment and enlightenment of the Nigerian child. However, 
These experts beg to differ. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika or HSE. Opinions have it that the problem with Nigeria's education sector goes beyond lack of money, but simply a case of lack of interest in the sector by the political elite. But while blames have been apportioned, let's not forget the whooping number of out-of-school children. The 38th Commandant of the Nigerian Armed Forces Resettlement Center, Oshodi Lagos, Air Vice Marshal Idigam Solumbo, has called for a better welfare for retiring military personnel. Lumbo emphasized on the need to help them integrate with ease into the civil world. Plus TV Africa's uh, correspondent, Destiny Momo, in this report takes a look at the deliverables of the center. This neatly maintained skill acquisition center housing 42 workshops is open for retirees to choose to be trained in. These skills range from agriculture, water production, fashion design, information technology, jewelry upgrading, livestock farming, to various other profitable skills for the benefits of retirees. During the three months training, retirees can decide to choose two kinds of skill acquisition to learn from. The 38th Commandant of the Center, Air Vice Marshal E.D. Gam Solubo, speaks on the journey so far in his tenure. Anyone can aspire or desire to be part of, and uh, it involves sacrifice of not just body and self, but sometimes uh, our lives, you know, uh, we might have to pay the supreme price. It's a very painful uh, you know, experience for you to see your colleagues that uh, you just saw now going airborne and not coming back, or an officer that you have taxed to embark on an operation and not return. This is the concern of a military commander. But because of the nature of what we do, that is the call to duty is a sacrifice for fatherland and uh, I, I joined all families that are bereaved of their breadwinners in the course of the conflicts that we are faced with within the country and outside the country where we have our soldiers serving uh, to, to share with them the pain of having to lose a, a father or a brother but I tell you that it is service that has been instituted by God and from creation it has been so. Their sacrifice is not in vain. Uh, I believe that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the military hierarchy has in place uh, you know, aspects of uh, welfare schemes to cater for the needs of wives and children in the absence of our loved ones. And for those of us that have retired, I think there is some certain level of improvement in our you know, uh, entitlements as we are leaving the service. Uh, this came during this regime of the present uh, government or under the watchful eyes of President Mohamed Buhari. And we are grateful to the CMC. One of the trainers takes us through the processes of training and the skills and the value it brings to the retirees. The water factory is one of the workshops in Africa. That is, in Africa is majorly a skill acquisition center that is designed to train the men of the armed forces that have served their fatherland for 35 years. So after the service, we try to give them skills that they can use to empower themselves. It's a, it's a kind of empowerment program. So this is one of the workshops where we take you through the skills acquisition. We train you on production of water, how to sell the water, how to market the water. And it takes just about three months to, to acquire the skills because we make you go through the process and some process of repairing of the machine and you go on marketing also. So it gives you a full package of what you expect out there when you are producing using the water, the challenges you come about, the what your workers are they are going to do to you because you see what the workers they do how they try to maneuver how they try to work so it gives you a picture of what you see how they when you go out there 
and this trainee is learning how to produce sachet and bottled water in large quantities. She is excited about the near immediate benefits once she rounds up the program. I've gained a lot coming to, Na to NAFRIC as an inexperienced, uh, somebody that has no knowledge about water factory, only drinking it on the, at home or on the street. But coming to this place, we were made to know the water, uh, quality of a good water. Then we were trained how to manage, to start the business, to manage the business. After retirement, you can always get something to fall back on and how to market it to get a good market all what it entails like the nooks and the crowning of the business the rudiment the rudiment of the the, the business we have been taught here so not that when you go outside the hanky panky maybe your staff want to play everything as a student here you learn this is the last phase of their regimented lives acquiring these skills is equal to ease into civil lives Destiny Mama for Plus TV Africa. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. But before we go, let's to remind you to please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and now, of course, Twitter. And also do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obuku. Thanks for watching.